Recently, researchers such as Brad Schoenfeld have been given much publicity by the proponents of high volume training because his research concluded that one set doesn't stimulate muscle growth to the same degree that multiple sets do. Unfortunately for such advocates, Mr. Schoenfeld's conclusions are not without their problems, particularly within the exercise science community. Some, such as Dr. Ralph Carpinelli, pointed out that Schoenfeld's methods lacked scientific rigor. According to Carpinelli, quote, Schoenfeld's conclusions reveal that many of the recommended resistance training protocols have their foundation in some long-held self-described bias. Blinding of assessors and statisticians, self-plagiarism, authorship responsibility, and conflicts of interest are briefly discussed as well. The conclusion is that most of the published peer-reviewed resistance training literature failed to provide any compelling evidence that the manipulation of any one or combination of the aforementioned variables can significantly affect the degree of muscle hypertrophy, especially in well-trained participants. Although the specific stimulus for optimal gains in muscle mass is unknown, many authors are desperately clinging to their unsupported belief that a greater volume of exercise will produce superior muscle hypertrophy. Also, according to Carpinelli, quote, There is a prevalent belief that at least three sets of each exercise are required to elicit optimal increases in strength and hypertrophy. However, most of the studies that reported the results of training with single versus multiple sets do not substantiate this tenet. In fact, the preponderance of evidence suggests that for training durations of 4 to 25 weeks, there is no significant difference in the increase in strength or hypertrophy as a result of training with single versus multiple sets. According to an article written by Frederick Forsythe, quote, Exercise researchers by the name of James Krieger and Brad Schoenfeld have pretty much taken over the internet with their studies supporting the premise that hypertrophy is principally volume driven. Almost every piece I've read online about the subject referred to Schoenfeld's and Krieger's research as being gospel. Carpinelli excoriates both their research and their reporting declaring them substandard and misleading. While statisticians have questioned Krieger's and Schoenfeld's conclusions because of their apparent torturing of the numbers, Carpinelli also puts the matter into context. These guys are advocating four to six times the exercise volume for an incremental increase in muscle size of one millimeter over the course of their studies, except that they don't present their findings in quite that clear a manner. James Krieger, who performed a meta-analysis that was published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research, also got his hand slapped by researcher James Fisher. Quote, The substantial limitations in comparing or grouping these articles suggest that the meta-analysis cannot be used to support the conclusion that multiple sets produce greater hypertrophic gains than single-set training. In contrast, Fisher and his colleagues have reported in their research that high-intensity training is more than adequate for stimulating muscle growth. Quote, To conclude, the results of this study suggest muscular performance gains can be produced using a high-intensity training style, HIT, or bodybuilding style, three sets, resistance training approach. However, muscular performance gains may be greater when using HIT. Therefore, we recommend HIT for maximizing muscular performance gains over a 10-week period." Close quote. Of course, Mike's consolidated program, which involves the least volume and frequency of his various heavy-duty workout programs, is the one that people point to when they say Mike's methods are outdated, not scientific, or that recent research, such as that of Krieger and Schoenfeld, establish that you need way more volume than this to make muscular gains. So here is the supreme irony. This is the one program that Schoenfeld studies fully supports. Schoenfeld was part of a paper published in June 2021 that provided strong evidence for the benefits of abbreviated training, very much along the lines of what Mike Menser advocated, once a week, limited sets, four, pretty much what Mike employed and recommended in the 70s through till the mid-1990s, and given two to three warm-up sets for each exercise in Mike's consolidated routine, it's almost exactly what he prescribed. And only three exercises, a big three, as prescribed in Mike's initial consolidation routine. Some excerpts from Schoenfeld's paper are 
Several studies have demonstrated that performing only a single set three times per week is effective for increasing strength and hypertrophy. Close quote. Quote, Emerging evidence indicates that it is possible to achieve similar training effects by training once a week compared to a higher frequency when total weekly volume is equated. Close quote. Quote, Evidence shows that significant muscular gains can be obtained from a low training volume. Close quote. Given that this paper was published in 2021, this would be new rather than outdated information. Yet it fully supports conclusions that Mike Menzer first made over a quarter of a century earlier. So, rather than being outdated, Mike's insights were instead well ahead of the curve. What's impressive about what I have indicated is that Mike, using science as his base, he was a pre-med student after all, analyzed the data from training hundreds of personal training clients and discerned a pattern of response. He then employed logic to weed out any contradictions in his training theory and made the necessary adjustments to his clients' training routines until he reached the conclusions that the exercise physiology world is now proving valid through their numerous studies and broader understanding of the actual science of bodybuilding exercise.